Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moments away from the Candy 500, the sweetest spectacle in racing. Fasten your seatbelts because this sketch is a crash course in two of the most serious metabolic complications of diabetes mellitus. Diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, or HHS. We'll cover the similarities and differences between these two hyperglycemic emergencies, then drive home some key points about their treatment. But before we fire up our ignitions, let's take it to the starting line and look at some of the factors that can ignite or precipitate DKA and HHS. Our race begins underneath these glowing bacteria lanterns, our recurring symbol for infection. That's because DKA and HHS usually kick into gear after some type of stress or acute infection has occurred, such as a UTI or pneumonia. Once these bacteria lanterns flash green, our drivers will put their pedals to the melodis, or metal, I mean. We've also marked the inside lane of the starting line with a mat that reads inside, our symbol for insulin. Only this mat's rather torn and ragged, like it's been through a few too many races. Completely inadequate for such a prestigious event, if you ask me. But we'll keep this torn mat here to remind you that inadequate insulin therapy can also precipitate DKA and HHS. And this stalled car. Now, well, looks like the tank in this old beater is empty and dried out. A reminder that dehydration can set off HHS, especially in older folks. Now that we've covered the precipitating factors, let's get this race started. <laughs> They're off, and it looks like the Team DKA car has taken an early lead. DKA is symbolized by this candy key, and this candy car is appropriately marked with a number 1, because DKA predominantly occurs in patients with type 1 diabetes. However, DKA can occur in patients with type 2 diabetes, especially if they've had insulin-dependent diabetes for more than 10 years or are taking SGLT2 inhibitors. This fired-up driver looks like she's already celebrating victory by raising her candy key, which should also remind you that elevated ketones is one key characteristic of DKA, but not HHS. But let's see if Team DKA can keep up the pace. <laughs> 